about four years ago on the 20th anniversary they, they decided to scale it right down. Behind me you see mirrors. Each one of those mirrors represents a life that was lost here. As you said, 29 lost their life. Wreaths were laid here just at about 10 past three. And you know, when you look back on that summer's day, I will never forget it. My son was born two days later and I was what I seen and what, what people seen here affected them for the rest of their life. I know that I, I thought what had I brought my son into. And you know, that bomb killed it was a five hundred pounds bomb. It was the real IRA brought it here. They put it at the bottom of the street. It killed twenty one immediately. Two hundred lay injured and another eight died in hospital amongst the dead, women and children shopping for school uniforms uh, because it was so close to going back to school. Uh, one of those women was carrying twins. I spoke with uh, Aidan, or Michael Gallagher, Aidan Gallagher, his son, died at 21 years of age. He went into town with his friend and they just went st really only a few hundred yards from where we're standing. And uh, he got the jeans, we know that, and he, got, he bought a pair of working boots. And uh, then there were, the bomb threat was phoned in to the police. In fact, there were three bomb warnings. And the police on the ground were starting to clear the street. Unknown to the police, they thought there were, because two of the calls had mentioned the courthouse, which would normally be seen as a legitimate target, uh, the police moved them further away from it, but unknown to them, they were actually moving it right on the bomb car. And at ten past three, the car detonated. Um, and within two and a half minutes, 21 people lay dead in the street. And uh, it, it was the most wicked and evil act. And the group that carried that out was lifelong militant dissident Republicans and uh, those people have never been brought to justice. There are feelings, there are feelings within the British government and the Irish government around how intelligence was managed. Uh, many of us believe that this was a preventable atrocity. Um, we were assured by the Chief Constable, by the Garda Commissioner, by the Prime Minister at the time, Tony Blair, and the Irish Prime Minister, Taoiseach Bertie Hearn, that no stone would be left unturned, that those responsible would be brought to court with proper evidence. Yet here we are 24 years later and we haven't really moved one step forward. Not one person has been charged with murder at Oma. This morning, when I got up and walked across the bedroom, the thought came into my head that Aidan is now longer dead than he was alive. He was 21 when he died and he's now 24 years dead. It shocked us to the core because we were all looking forward to peace. That's what we were promised. We made sacrifices in order to get that peace. We were willing to, the people that were involved in paramilitarism, we were willing to um, accept that they, they were going to gain some benefits from this. But all of us were going to end up with the prize of peace. And yet... Uh, when people describe it as the worst atrocity of the Troubles, it's actually the first atrocity of peacetime. It was the most wicked and evil act that anybody ever could have uh, done. Those people planned and prepared and delivered that bomb from the Irish Republic. They spent less than 40 minutes in Northern Ireland and returned to the Irish Republic. So I believe that there is a huge onus on both governments, both the British government and the Irish government, to work together and give the families the truth. Well, you could you could see from that man, he is devastated, and you can understand that he lost his son, as did many here. And they really are looking for a public inquiry. They, they want that inquiry because you can argue that this wasn't part of the Troubles. The Troubles ended with the Good Friday Agreement on the 10th of April, 1998. This was four months later. It was the start of a new time in Northern Ireland when we were all looking forward to peace. We were promised it, and that day in particular, it felt as if the world had stood still. And I'm sure for those that were affected, it definitely did, and it has done ever since. There is a lot of um, suspicion in and around uh, this part of the world of why there wasn't 
why they weren't stopped coming across the border. The intelligence seemed to know it and the guards. And it has been already on record here that the special branch here knew about it. They wanted to stop uh, this car and the bomb coming in. Well, they didn't know, obviously, it was a bomb at that stage coming in, but the word wasn't given to them. So you've got the question to yourself... This, these were not combatants in any one shape or form. The troubles were over. They just want the truth and they want to get to the bottom of it. And they have asked at the highest levels for a public inquiry. And it looks as if the new legislation that's heading through the House to stop uh, stuff of the past and almost give an amnesty will not cover Roma. So I think the families are happy enough in that, that they still have a chance of a public inquiry. But how far that goes politically, no one can tell. It is the most extraordinary story that just as uh, the province was, was, was promised that peace, just as uh, that agreement was signed, as all of those political sacrifices were made, that violence continued. I, I, I wonder what is the community's feeling towards how much this particular atrocity may or may not have been sanctioned by some of those who are now adjacent to elected politics. Well, that is always the fear. And it was, it was last week we buried David Trumbull, who did give us 25 years of peace, but he, his own party split because they insisted that they want the decommissioning of IRA weaponry and they didn't want paramilitary prisoners out of jail until all the um, armaments came in. And the sorry thing about this was that that Semtex, that explosives that was in that car was IRA weaponry. It was the new IRA that was using it. It was a mistake in the peace process that happened. And yes, some of those may still be in politics now, and that may be why there is no um, public inquiry into this atrocity. I, I, I'm not making excuses for the bombers one bit. I would never dare do it. But I don't think they meant... You know, there was a number of mistakes happened here and people were hushed from one end of the town down into the other, straight into the bomb. But that was that was a lack of, of, of planning by bombers who were vicious, vicious people who, who, who don't deserve any sort of credibility whatsoever. There was no need for that. But, you know, you're talking about policemen on the ground that were just hearing information that there might have been stuff in the courthouse, it may have been the target, and that they, they pushed the, the people down this way. It was the most unfortunate day, and it has, it has lived on in this town and most of Northern Ireland for quite a while, uh, for 25 years. And Oma in particular is not a very sectarian town. It's a very mixed town. It always was. It was a border town. It had a lot of unionists in it. It had a lot of nationalists in it. And it was a very agricultural town where communities, although they might have had their own sport and their, their own ways in life, they did live together and they helped each other.